Buck, you work for the government. I yeah, yeah. Mr. Libertarian, Mr. The state is the monopoly on violence and can do no good. Or is that what you do you not think that? So <laughs> to do what I do, I have a passion for it. There's no other option. And for well, in my old defense, I got into it before I was considering myself an ANCAP way before that. Right. But I can't fight fire and pull people out of burning buildings and do CPR on, on people and save their lives privately. There just doesn't exist. So uh, I have to do it this way. I wish it weren't the case. And I, I've thought about doing some papers on, on the way to privatize the fire department, but mm -hmm. it's not going to happen anytime soon. And I have other political interests outside of, of the fire stuff. Um, I mean, I certainly can think of models on how it would work, but you know, it doesn't work that way. And so to do it, I've got to unfortunately get paid uh, by taxes. I want to hear more about what it's like to be a firefighter. I'm just really curious. But before we do that, do you know about the history of private firefighting companies? You told me a long time ago. Well, no, not I a did. long time. Yeah, we spoke about it and I cannot remember it. Is, does that have to do with insurance companies? Uh, no, it's an amazing story. People who want to get a really quick hit on this can just go watch Gangs of New York, the movie, That's because right. that it's in there. So before the Civil War, there were no, basically no, almost no public fire companies in the country. They were all private. So in New York and Philadelphia and Boston, cities like that, there were multiple competing fire companies. And they were organized around ethnicity. So there were Irish fire companies and they were, there were Protestant wasp fire companies and they would often be associated with gangs and the mm. fire companies with their gangs would often have these pitched battles in the streets. But the other funny thing was that anytime a fire broke out, there was a race. They had to race to the fire mm. And whichever one got there first got to put out the fire and got paid. We still do that. Oh, really? You guys compete? Oh, it, it's very common. Of course, it doesn't matter who gets paid. We all get paid the same. But oh, yeah, it's very common to do it as fast as you can. And you're always cognizant of which other engine companies nearby. Where's the address at? Who's closer? We got to get there first. Oh, oh, really? all, oh, yes. Just for pride, though? Oh, well, the people that get there first have the most fun because you get to go directly inside the burning building. Oh, the action. Yeah, correct. Yeah, you guys like the action. OK, I want to talk about that. But yeah, so so and then what happened was, of course, the government started to take over and started to professionalize the fire companies, and then they made it illegal to have a private fire company. This is mid 20th, mid 19th century, around the time of the Civil War. And it's been, I don't know if it's actually, I'm not sure it's, it must be illegal, but yeah, essentially that became the case. So by after World War II, state had a monopoly and that's that ever since then. But for many, many years, they operated and competed against each other. And, um, you know, I don't know exactly how efficient and effective they were, but the model now the fighting in the streets, that's the thing you got to work out. You got to figure out how to avoid that. The gang, the gang warfare. Yeah. But um, yeah, no, I think it could happen. I wonder if you could just just start doing it. Why is there anything to stop you from just just being a private firefighter and like having a private group that you fight fires with and you could be on call in a particular like neighborhood or town? And what's I mean, it's not illegal for you to operate that way, is it? Not that I know of, for one, it would be expensive. Yeah, uh, to have your own engine. <laughs> yeah, and and to just the overhead is, you know, those engines are expensive. Yeah, you know, there's they break constantly. Mm -hmm. It's interesting you ask that. I, I need to think about that because I I know like on in apartment complexes they'll have someone say who works for San Antonio Police Department in a apartment complex. Well, he's their on duty security guards, and that's basically private, and he gets free rent. Yeah. Exactly. So he's kind of doing that. I guess you can do that in a sense, but for fire, yeah. here's our fire engine. Can we live here for free? <laughs> Why not? Maybe I should I mean, try that on my street. 
I mean, I'm serious. I think you should think about this. I think it's actually a possibility to do it on a small scale, but you just have to do it at all effectively to to serve as a model, right? And as an example, and you can just say, well, it is possible now. And then maybe other people will emulate it. But I want you to do that. I want you to have your own company. Yeah, I'd be awesome at it, of course. I know. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, just just don't fight the uh, the rival Irish fire company yes. down, down yeah. the road. Yeah.